First thing we wanna do before we get too crazy with it is right here, there's an orange service plug. We wanna push that up, then over and out. So for draining our coolant, we have two radiators on this. We have the main radiator and then the inverter radiator. The main radiator is drained by that drain right there. But if you're unable to get to it, that's okay. When we pull the water pump off, our coolant will come out there if you can't get it here. So not a big deal. That lower hose, that's for our inverter. So we can pop that hose off and drain our inverter cooler. Let's see if this will twist. There we go. Then we got our catch pan underneath right there. Let's see how big of a mess we can make. Perfect. We'll just let that drain. All right, moving along, we got our cowl to take off. Our wiper arms are 14 millimeter. Give them a wiggle and they should pop up. There we go. Our top plastic can come off. Should just pop up. There we go. Take this little rubber. There we go. We just have to maneuver it. It was kind of stuck under the hood, just a smidge here. So that side's off. Come over to this side. Now this vehicle does not have clips on the side, but if you have clips, there may be one on this end and one on that end. There we go. Perfect. Now we'll remove our wiper motor, unplug it, and then 10 millimeter bolts. Set this aside. And now our bottom tray. We have this harness we can disconnect from the back with just a pair of pliers. I like using a little small needle nose like this. You just pinch the back of it and it pops through. There we go. And then same with this one here. Just wanna pinch it, pop it up. We have our relay box, two 10 millimeters. I'm just gonna put these bolts right back in. Pull up and out. Nice, that gives us a lot of room to work with. So next we wanna get access to our valve cover. We're gonna pull off our air box. 10 mil here, might actually be an eight, let me see. No, 10 mil. Now it's okay if you do this stuff out of order, it really doesn't matter. We're just trying to get access to pull our valve cover off. So this pipe is screwed in from the bottom, so you just leave it just like this. Put the radiator cap back on so nothing falls inside. We have two 10 millimeters back here. There we go. Got our mass airflow. We can just unplug. And then there's a clip right here with a flathead screwdriver. Just pull up on that clip. There we go. Now mine just pulled up, but if yours does not pull up, there's a 10 millimeter clamp right here in the front, right underneath our mass airflow sensor. Just in case you need that. Mine just wiggled right up. We'll loosen that up before putting it back on. So just something to note. Move this just out of the way. We'll remove our brake reservoir. There's an electrical connector on this side. Pop that out. And it looks like two 10 millimeter bolts. There we go. Kind of locks in the front, so slide it backwards and up. We'll just get this out of the way. Probably use a bungee cord and put these back in. And we're gonna get all our electrical connectors out of the way. For our ignition coils, these like to break a lot. If you just push on the tab, they like to snap. So I like using just a little pick here, getting in front of them and popping them up from the front and then wiggle them off. If they do break, that's okay. They will slide back on and, and not come off. But if you want these safety tabs, then this is how I like doing it. Just pop this out of the way here. Okay, our fuel injectors, pop those off. Nice. Now we have our main harness here, 10 millimeter. And we have this little plastic plate we can slide out. All right, that's good for now. We're not gonna pull the cover off yet because I don't wanna get any dirt and stuff in the engine while we're still working around here. So we're just gonna leave the cover on. That gives us our access. Now we're gonna work over here so we got access to our timing cover. We're gonna get our reservoir out of the way. 10 millimeter back here. We have this connector attached to it here. Just push that through. Okay, we can even unplug it if we want to just to give us a little more freedom. I believe that's it. And it comes up. Maybe this has to come up first. This little piece it just has a little clip in the front. This clip was missing. And this, it just pops out pretty easy. Let's see if that's what we needed. We get to the electrical connectors. Should just be two. One for the front pump, one for the rear pump. There we go. Perfect. So now we got our hoses. There we go. There we go. 
Hopefully I don't do this too often, but I wasn't recording. So we got the bottle out. The next thing I did was just took this off. Just our bracket that our brake reservoir was connected to. Two 10 millimeter bolts up top, one in the front, and then this little hose here was pushed in right here. You just take a pair of pliers, pop that out. And we don't have to pull this out. We just have to just set it aside like that. No big deal. Now we have access to our engine mount. So what we want to do is take a jack, put it under the engine, put just a little bit of pressure on it. We want to support the engine while we pull off our mount. They all look like 14 millimeter. I think that's it. Oh, there's one underneath. So there are two more from underneath. Let me show you real quick. So that's one there under the engine mount, and there's one more behind it. So we'll get those from underneath, no big deal. Another thing I wanna show you while we're here, before we take our drive belt off, we're gonna go ahead and crack those three 10 millimeter bolts holding our water pump pulley on. We don't have to take them all the way out, we're just gonna crack them loose. It's kinda hard to see from this angle in the lighting, but in order to pull those bolts off, we have to hold the pump in place to prevent that pulley from spinning. So I'm gonna try this, don't know if it'll work, but I'm gonna see if I can tighten the belt by tightening the tensioner. It's a 14 mil, we'll break loose that pulley bolt. There we go. And then a 12 mil tensioner bolt right here on top. We'll see if we can really snug that down. Get it nice and tight. Okay, we'll take a 10 mil ratchet and see if we can just pop these loose. Okay, there's one. Yeah, that worked. You just have to kind of give it a little, little jerk. And it'll pop. See if we can get the other two. Nice, okay. That was two. One more. Okay, I think that's it. Sweet, it worked. So now we can actually take the belt off completely. All right, we'll just get that belt from underneath. Okay, let's hop down below. We got it jacked up, we'll pull our tire off. So now for this cover, we got a couple of clips up here. We'll pop that off and then see what else we have. So yours might look different getting this plastic off, but just follow it, try to figure out how it comes off. Uh, mine has zip ties and stuff that, that'll be clipped and a couple of screws because my bumper here is not complete. But just methodically follow it, figure out how it comes off. But that's our next step. We want to get this whole plastic piece off and out of the way. So now from underneath, now we can see clearly those two bolts. We'll pop those off, still 14 millimeter. We can pull off our water pump pulley too while we're down here. Those should just be finger tight now. And then once that's off, then we can get our big bracket off as well. Then we also have our crank pulley that will pull off too. Making good progress. Let me get those. One thing I'm gonna do is go up top and put on some top bolts. Since these are coming from underneath, I don't wanna be underneath here if something fails. So I'm gonna secure the top back up, then pull these off and then retake off the top one so I can be up above while this mount comes off. I'm gonna pull off the bracket holding our AC line on. And then this hose goes to, looks like our purge solenoid, 10 millimeter for that as well. Okay, let's see if this can come up. Okay, I must be missing something. Let me show you something real quick. So this stud here is actually a bolt. Let me show you. If you follow, come down here. Let me turn the light on. It's that bolt right there. So I'm gonna see if that bolt can back out. I think that's what's holding us up. It's also a 14 mil. Let me see. Yep, I think that was it. Cause it was just at an angle and this needs to come straight up. Yeah, there we go. Nice. And then we have one more bolt holding that other bracket on. There we go. Kind of hard to see, but I'm just taking the metal bracket off that has our tensioner pulley on. It's 14 millimeter. I broke loose with a ratchet. Now we'll see if we can get him with my electric ratchet. Now my ratchet's stuck. There we go. So if that happens to you, I took the battery out so it wouldn't keep turning on as I took it out. But that was just for that bottom one. There we go. Also by jacking up the engine a little like I did, gave us better access to that middle one. Nice. And just the top one. Uh, is there one more? There is one more, so there's four total. It's right underneath the tensioner pulley. <sighs> Okay, perfect. Let's pull our crank pulley off, 19 millimeter. Should come out pretty easy. Oh, nice. Let me move you real quick and we'll pull off our crank position sensor. Hopefully you can see better. So on our connector, there's a tab right here. We wanna pull it all the way back. It's kinda hard to do with your fingers, but there. And then it should slide right off. So right here is this little tab you wanna pull back. So that gets our connector off, 10 millimeter, holds it in. 
and it's really long. There we go, and out. So now from up above, we'll pull off our water pump. Want to have a catch pan underneath? There's a lot of coolant that's going to come dripping out. I just wanted to show you, I need a little more room for my catch pan. So I took the jack out. I put a jack stand underneath the engine. That's holding it up for now. So I was able to take the jack out to get my big catch pan under here. For the water pump, it's just a cute little pump right there. A couple of 10 millimeter bolts and we'll pull that out. All right, now we just have to pull the valve cover and then we can pull off the timing cover. 10 millimeter bolt holds our coils in. Hmm, like a rock. That's weird. Oh, beautiful little moth. Now there should be two 10 millimeter bolts in the middle. And then our perimeter bolts, all 10 millimeter. And still have our two hoses on the side here. Little we'll breather hoses. There we go. So they give you a little spot right here to pry up on. There we go. Let's pop that seal. Nice. Some of the gas gets still stuck to the head. There we go. One thing I forgot here is our VVT solenoid. We can unplug it. Get a little assistance with this one. And then a 10 millimeter. Twist and pop it out. We also have this ground strap. There's a 10 millimeter right here on the frame. We'll just pop that off. There we go. Now for our timing cover, I'll throw where the bolts are up on the screen, but there's not really much for filming. We're just getting all those bolts off and then we'll pop it away from the engine and then wiggle it up. All right, I think I got all the bolts. I double checked. I think we're good. And remember, as you're pulling the bolts off, to get better access, you can always raise the engine or lower the engine as needed. Let me get a little pry bar and we'll start prying this away. Just try up here first real quick. There we go. Try back here. Well, this will just be really sticky because of the RTV. Get a little in here. There we go. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. I think we're still a little glued down at the bottom. There we go. Okay, should pull up. Nice. I'm gonna pull this little herd solenoid hose off. Or it can come out the bottom. Ugh. All right, there we go, that's it. Now mine came out the bottom, but if you're pulling it out of the top, I would have had to pull this hose off. Now we wanna put this at cylinder one, top dead center. To make it easier to turn the engine over, I'm gonna pull the spark plugs out real quick. Now I'm just putting the crank pulley bolt back in. I think that's it. Let me show you real quick. So on the exhaust, there's one line facing straight up. And then on the intake, there's a line there facing straight up as well. So both lines facing straight up. And then down on the crank, we have our notch there. Really hard to see, but there's a little dimple. Can you see it right there? That little dimple is facing three o'clock. And that's it. Timing set, now we can pull the chain. Everything's a 10 millimeter. Getting the tensioner from down below. And that guide should be able to just slide off. There we go. And the other arm, one bolt from down below. One bolt from up above. There we go. And that's it. Out we go. All right, we got the timing chain off, making awesome progress. This is gonna wrap up this video in the series. The next video, we're gonna be pulling off the head. Hey everybody, welcome to the second video of this 08 Toyota Prius rebuild. Underneath the vehicle, there should be two 14 millimeter bolts, one on this side, and then come over, there's the other one. And then there's a bracket right there. We'll just pull off that one 14 millimeter to release it from that bracket. That should be it for the exhaust for now. You can get to that bracket bolt pretty easy from the wheel well. That's how I'm gonna tackle it. Next, we're gonna tackle our inverter. Normally, when the service plug is disconnected, there's no more voltage coming up front. It's no longer a live circuit. But if there's any kind of malfunction, we could be exposed to high voltage. To double check that everything's dead, we're gonna be using a voltmeter. We want volts DC, we want the red in the input, the black in the comm. Then we'll go back to the battery, the regular 12 volt battery, and just double check that this is working. Let's hop back there. So all we wanna know is if this will tell us if there's a voltage present. So I'm hooked up to the 12 volt battery, and you can see we have 12 volts. So we know our meter's working. Now we'll go back up front. Next, we want to pull off our cover. 10 millimeter bolts plus a T30. 
Before I remove the cover, I'm gonna throw on my high voltage gloves. These have a insulating glove to protect against high voltage, plus a leather protecting glove. Throw this on, and this is just in case there's any voltage, and again, there shouldn't be, but just in case, I don't wanna to touch something I'm not supposed to if it's live. So it should pop up, there we go. All right, there's a few places we wanna check voltage. Let me zoom you in a little closer. Hopefully you can see right here, there's a black and a red. That's the positive and negative coming straight from our battery. So we got volts DC. Go ahead, touch these together and we should have zero. And there we go, zero volts. So we're not getting anything coming off our battery. Next, we move this out of the way. You can see a little better. Right underneath this foam, there are two bolt heads. We wanna check those as well. Zero volts, good. Okay, we got one more place coming off the electric motor. Here in the back, there are three bolt heads that we can check. We wanna check a combination of all of them. So we'll go far end to middle, K okay, zero, far end to close end, all right, zero, and then close end to middle, still showing zero. And that's it. We are completely safe. We take our gloves off, touch anything we want. It's gonna lay the cover back over for now so we don't get a bunch of dust in it. We can disconnect our plug here. This green tab you push up like that, and then you just pinch like normal. Get a little screwdriver to pinch. Sometimes my fingers aren't strong enough. There we go. We have this top hose comes off. Give it a twist, there we go. And we have a bottom hose right under it. There we go, that comes off. We have this sensor here that can be disconnected. So get a little pick to help me with this one. This sensor's giving me a little trouble, so I'm just gonna unbolt it. Two 10 millimeter bolts. All right. We wanna remove our two big back wires to just pinch and pull off. There we go, there's one. There's the other one. Next, we wanna remove this big one here. Let me move you around. We want the two 10 millimeter bolts on the outside. And we'll pull the cover back off and get those three connections on the inside. Plug should come out. There we go, set that aside. We have these three plugs here. You just pinch and pull. Okay, and then we'll pop this out of its little grommet slot. Push that aside. Now there are three wires in the back. Let me zoom you in. We wanna disconnect those three wires as well. Once those are disconnected, we have that bracket there, 10 millimeter. Just gonna put the cover back on to protect it. So these brackets, two up front, one in the back, they're actually 12 millimeter. We'll pull those. One more little coolant hose right here. It's like a little bleeder. Pop that off. Okay, I think we're getting close. Pull up, I think that's it. Not sure what it's stuck on. We got this cable right here in the front. Let's see if it's attached inside too. Yeah, it looks like it. Let me pull this back off, I'll show you real quick. 10 millimeter for our three bolts inside and then two 10 millimeters for the outside. Okay, that should pop through. There we go. Okay, I think that's it. Get a good grip on it. Nice. That wasn't so bad. And what that did was give us access to these connectors over here and our hoses. So now we have this conglomerate of stuff. We'll move out of the way. Disconnect the connectors. A couple of ground straps. This connector in the back for the oxygen sensor, we're gonna pull that bracket as well. 10 mil. All right, looking good. Pull this off. There we go. Tuck this out of the way. So we'll get those two coolant hoses. Just using a screwdriver trying to break this hose loose. We might have to cut it and just get a new upper radiator hose. Might be the only way. That's what I did, <clears throat> I had to cut it. But no big deal, we'll just get a new hose. Okay, looks like there's actually two more coolant hoses. Here's a little pick for the little one. There we go. I'm trying to get the medium one off. I don't wanna cut that one if I can help it. Sometimes just using a little angled pick can get in there and help break it free. I'm gonna remove that little coolant temp sensor. Might help me get a little more room. It's a 19 millimeter. There we go, just get that pick back in there. Got it. Okay. Then there's a heater core hose bracket. Pull that off, 10 millimeter. Let's see what else we got on this side. I think that's it. Now our fuel line bracket, we'll pull our fuel line off next. 
The fuel line has a plastic cover. We just wanna pull that off. It should just come straight out. Looks like this, comes straight out. Now the line just has two sides that you pinch together and pull up. I like using a pair of pliers like this. We're gonna get our glasses and a rag, pinch our two sides, put our rag over it, collect any spray, and we'll pull up. Okay, that's it. We'll just wrap this, collect any of that fuel that could dribble out, and that's it. Easy peasy. You don't have to take that bracket off after all. Okay, I think that takes care of that side. All of this. I think we got stuff now in the front we could take off. Our intake manifold does not have to come off. We can leave that on. We have these electrical connectors here. Looks like to our throttle body. Pop those off. Again, just using the pick helps me. There we go. Screwdriver on this one. There we go. Got that connector. I don't think many of these have been off since it was out of the factory in 08. Some of them are on there just a little stiff. Okay, and then we have this little bracket on the side here it can come off of just to free this harness. There we go. So that's out of the way. We can leave these two hoses on. They're already disconnected. We have two coolant hoses here in the front. Using a long pair of pliers will help me out here. Hopefully get those to break free. And then this one in the front. There we go. We have our dipstick tube. That can come off 10 millimeter. We have our purge solenoid. We're just gonna take the hose off. The hose that goes towards the manifold. Just pop that off real quick. Everything else can stay. And we got this electrical connector for our knock sensor that can come off. There we go. And then this whole harness bracket, we just disconnect it from the bracket. There, nice. I think, let me double check. I think that's it. This harness here, if you keep following it, it connects again to the manifold. So we'll just pop that off the connector or the bracket, I mean. Okay. So I don't see anything else. We already got that side. We already got that side. Okay, on this side, let me show you real quick. This is one more thing. So right here is the connector to our oxygen sensor. We wanna disconnect this harness from its little, little bracket right here. That'll free it from that hose. And I think that's it. I think all that's left is pulling our cam so we have access to our head bolts. Taking our head bolts out and the head should come right out. As long as you didn't miss anything. We'll pull our big cap off first, 12 millimeter. We wanna put all this on a nice, clean, organized surface. Just tap that real quick. There we go. Now the rest are 10 millimeter. We'll start in the middle and walk it off going to the outside. Now these should be marked. This is I2 for intake number two. The big cap is number one, so that can help. But we do need to put them in the exact same order, facing the exact same direction. Same thing with the exhaust. So the head bolts are a number 10 triple square. Looks kind of like a Torx with a couple extra splines on it. Now mine was a little too fat here, so I had to grind down, make a little smaller shaft. But they do make longer ones, I just didn't have it. But this should work. We're gonna start in the middle. Okay, now we can pull them out all the way. I wanna get all the little washers too, so we don't lose them. The new head bolts did not come with new washers, so we wanna make sure we got all of them. All right, here we go. Let's see if I got the muscles for it. I think it's just the dowels in the front are holding it a little. There we go. Okay, I'm stuck on something in the front here. Oh, it's just this little connector here in the front. Let's get that with a little pair of pliers, push it through. There we go. Just for the knock sensor connector. Up. Ugh, come on. Almost got you, buddy. There we go. Nice. Cute little cylinders. Hey, nice work. Now let's go dismantle the head. So I'm gonna throw the cams back in. The machine shop needs them anyway. Let's see, set this timing right. I'm just doing this to keep the lifters in. Cause I'm gonna tip this whole thing upside down and work on it upside down. I think that'd be the easier way to go. Let's take our fuel rail off first. Cause I know this right here is gonna get in our way. So 10 millimeter over here. And then in the front, we have two 12 millimeters. We should be able to just wiggle that out. There we go. Nice. Just leave that set aside for now. We got little plastic spacers we'll take out. And I think that's it. So now let's tip this upside down. There, that sits a little more flat. We could pull off our intake. These are gonna be 12 millimeter. 
All right, okay. nothing to it. I think you could take this off while the head's still on, but either way. Okay, swing this around. And then everything over here, we'll pull our coolant sensor back off. I just put it on so I wouldn't misplace it. Set that there. All these little tin mills can come off. Cam position sensor. And then pull this off up here, tin mill. Perfect. Uh, that takes care of this side. So now we just have our exhaust left. So we'll flip this back over and dangle the exhaust off the side. We also have this ground strap we can remove. Big bolt there. The 14 mil. Remove you so you can see the exhaust. So 10 mil for the heat shield. And then 12 mil for our main bolt. We'll start in the middle and work our way out. Crack these with a ratchet. Nice. Well, that's it. This is off to the machine shop. All right, we got the head off, big win. So it'll be sent to the machine shop. The timing cover, intake manifold, valve cover, that's all sent to the machine shop. They'll put it through their parts washer and make it look new once again. Here we go, gonna put the head on. Let's go to the block, we need to prep a few things. So on the block, we wanna make sure that our mating surface here is good and clean. And we do not wanna use any kind of metal scraper, only plastic. And typically you don't really need a scraper. There's not a lot of gasket material that gets left behind, but it's okay to just take a little plastic blade, go all the way around it. Then we wanna blow out each of our bolt holes. Now this block was taken to the machine shop, was cleaned all up, so we don't have any fluid in our bolt holes anymore, but when you just pull the head off normally, a little bit of coolant, a little bit of oil will get in these, especially these back ones. So we just wanna make sure they're all blown out. And that's it, as far as prepping the block. I'm gonna grab the gasket. All right, our new gasket goes on dry. And just make sure you have our coolant ports here. You can only go on one way. So just make sure it's the right way. Put it over the dowels. Dowels will hold it in place. There we go. Make sure all the holes line up. Perfect, okay. So on the front, just on the ears, the manual is saying put a little bit of RTV. So I'm gonna apply it and then I'll show you. I don't know why it goes on top and not underneath. The manual's not too specific there, but let me show you. So just right here on the ears, a little bit of RTV. Now we're ready to put our head on. We'll make sure the bottom is nice and clean. Now before we put our head on, actually, we're gonna set cylinder one at top dead center. It got moved around. There we go. So I'll set this down gently. We just wanna make sure that our surface is really clean. I do recommend taking this to a machine shop to get a fresh surface. They don't take a lot of material off the surface, they just make sure that it's really nice and true. Perfectly clean, now we'll flip it over and set it in. Okay, and just straight down as much as possible. There we go, fits in the dowels. All right, we got new head bolts, but we have to reuse the old washers. Want to apply a little bit of oil to our threads. Oh, there we go, okay. Dripping all over the place. So put in our old washer. I might have to, there we go, just drop the washer in first. Then we can drop our bolt down. We'll do that to all of them. Just coat the threads. I'm gonna make a mess with this thing. Now coating the threads doesn't take a lot, but we do want them coated. that easy. I'll set them all in, then we'll get our initial torque. So these three in the back are super hard. The washer wants to keep falling down the back of that coolant port. So get a magnet. One, if it falls down there, you can retrieve it with a long magnet like this. But we can prevent it from falling in the first place just by putting it on a magnet like that. Then we'll hold the magnet down, line it over the hole, and then put our bolt in. Then we can pull our magnet out. There we go. I dropped it down there probably like four or five times. And you can be pretty careful, but every time it fell back there, it like really made me nervous that I couldn't get it back out. So just using a little magnet, save you some headache. So now we're just gonna hand thread them in, or at least get them started by hand. To speed things up, I'm just gonna suck them down with my electric ratchet. Our initial torque is 22 foot pounds. We'll start in the middle and work our way out. Now we want to turn each bolt 90 degrees. We're going to take a marker, mark our head, and then get you a closer look. On each bolt I marked the head, you can see the mark right there. So I did that to every single bolt. So now when we turn it 90 degrees, that mark 
will now be on this side facing in that direction. It's gonna be the same pattern. We'll do 90 and then we'll go back through another 90. So at the end of things, this mark here will end up on this side. All right, let's do it. All right, we're gonna need some muscle for this. I got my breaker bar. I wish this would just stay out of the way. Let me get a, let me get something for that. There we go. I'll just secure it with a bungee for extra protection. They're much easier. Now I don't have to fight that thing. Okay, 90 degrees. All right, that is it. Now we'll do that exact same thing one more time. Let me swoop you in. All right, now you can see that we're 180. So our mark is on this side. We started here, went 90, went 90, 180. So that's it on all of them. Double check that they're all 180 total. And that's it. All right, let's throw our cams on. Our cylinder one is at top dead center. What we want to do is turn the crank counterclockwise about 40 degrees to lower our piston down. Right now it's all the way up. We want to back it off. So when we're tightening up our cams, if we don't get our cam in the right spot, we're not pushing any of these valves into the piston head. Once we got that set, we'll take a little oil. We'll throw a little oil in our journals. We're gonna make sure our camshaft is nice and clean. We'll put this on. We want the timing mark face up. There we go. Now on our intake, we have this variable cam timing phaser. It can move. We wanna make sure that it's all the way to the left. So counterclockwise, all the way. And then our timing mark is the mark that goes all the way through. So there's another one of these here, but it doesn't go all the way through. So it's the one that goes all the way through. There we go. Get this thing out of the way. And get you a better angle. So on our caps, we're gonna apply a little oil. Throw it around, lay those on. And we'll do that with all the caps. Just a little lube. Now they are marked, so just remember this says I3, so one, two, three. This one says E3, and there is a forward and a back, so just the arrow points forward towards the timing chain, and that's it. Just do that to all of them. Okay, we wanna suck these down little by little, walking the cam in place, starting in the middle and working your way out. So you don't wanna just tighten one completely because that'll, that'll kink the cam. So you just wanna kind of walk it down. We have 17 foot pounds for our number one cap. And then nine foot pounds for the rest. Next, we're gonna put on our exhaust manifold and I'm just gonna rest the valve cover right on top so we don't get anything falling in while we're bending over. There, it's gonna rest like that for us. Okay, so with the exhaust, it might be hard to show you what I'm doing, but we have the gasket here. Slide this on. Now there's two studs back here. And really what I should have did was put the exhaust on before putting the head on, but no big deal. Okay, so that slides over those studs. Now we can move the whole engine forward like that. And this should slide back there. Then you can see the studs. There we go. That goes on pretty easy. Now I'm just gonna put the two stud bolts on, or nuts I mean. That'll hold it in place. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna look, make sure the gasket's still in its spot. Nice. Now I'll put the other three bolts in. Just kind of feeling with your finger where the holes are. Can't get those bottom ones very well. There we go. There's one of them. Struggling with this last one here. Gotta contortion my wrist in a way it's not used to being in. All right, got it. So these are torqued to 20 foot pounds. Okay, that's not gonna work. Not sure if I can get a torque wrench in there. Nope, I can't get my torque wrench in there. So we're gonna estimate 20 foot pounds. So 20 foot pounds is not a lot. We don't wanna over torque and break a bolt. All right, we'll throw on our heat shield. We'll put a little anti-seize on our bolts. And I forgot to mention putting a little anti-seize on our exhaust bolts too. We'll make sure that our O2 sensor connectors out of the way. Now the heat shield bolts are just snug. They don't have to be crazy tight. So we have a few things we could put back on the head. Now these can get put on even before the head goes on. We have our cam position sensor. We wanna lube up that O-ring. We'll slide it in, perfect. 
Now, if you want to replace any of these things, like get a new cam position center and all that, that would be a good time. That's just snug. We have our two ground straps here we could put on. Our coolant temp sensor as well. We got these coolant hoses can go back on. Okay, now our upper radiator hose, I had to cut this to get it off. So we're actually gonna replace it with a new one. So for that, we just have this clamp here. Ugh. It's not twisting off the radiator. So I'll just cut it off the radiator. There we go. Okay, transfer the clamp over. So I'm gonna put a little bit of silicone paste as a lubricant. Just right here in the hose. I'll do that to both sides. Okay, slide it on. If you can get your clamps locked like this, it's designed with a little lock tab, that really helps. Otherwise these things can be quite a pain. When putting the clamp on, I don't slide it all the way back and then try to re-slide it forward when the hose is on. I put it where I want it first and then just slide it all on together. And now all I have to do is release the clamp. Nice new hose and we can put that hose in this little clamp holder right here. Nice. That takes care of all the hoses over here. A lot of this little piddly stuff, I'm just gonna whip right through. You've taken it off, so it should be pretty self-explanatory where it all goes back together. If you need, you can go back to the video where I'm pulling everything off. Let's see this right here. And we have our coolant bracket and our O2 sensor connector. Get those. Plug those connectors in. We're not ready for the valve cover yet. Just looking around. I have one of these ground straps in the wrong spot. I'm just gonna move it real quick. We have our radio frequency thing that comes down below here on one of these. Plug that in. All right, I think that buttons up this side. If I miss anything, I'll, I'll let you know. But now we can come to the front here. We can't put our VVT solenoid in until we have our timing cover on, but we can put this top ground strap on. We're also doing a lower radiator hose. We're gonna pull that off and do the exact same thing that we did over here. These clamps are just hard to work with. All right, almost got it. There we go. Now we're just gonna take it off of that thermostat housing. Go with the little lubricant again. Put the thermostat housing on. All right, now we'll slide this other one on. No, it's hard to see exactly what I'm doing down here. It's just not in the best spot for filming. So the new thermostat gets a new gasket. We're gonna coat this as well. It's a little bit of silicone paste. The way it slides in really good. Now this has a little bleeder on the top. We wanna make sure that is pointing up. We don't want that down. So hopefully you can see that. But we want that facing up. So we'll put it in. And we'll put our thermostat housing on. And those two nuts. All right, snug it down. We got a new knock sensor. Because of the location of where it is under the manifold, we decided just putting on a new one now as preventative maintenance. We'll torque that down. I'm gonna go ahead and put the connector on. Perfect. That just comes out the side. What else do we got? We can plug in our temperature sensor connector. We can plug in our oil pressure sensor, that connector. Okay, that's it. Okay, I think we're ready for the intake manifold. Got a new gasket, and we'll lay this on. Okay, lay our bolts in. All right, I'll snug these down, and then we'll get a torque. I have 15 foot-pounds for this. All right, we can throw on our throttle body. Got a new gasket, toss that on. Then we have this one hose goes back behind. Just snake it around, goes towards the timing. And then we have our two hoses that come out the front here. Lay that over the studs. Boom. We'll snug and torque these down. Then that hose has that connector or that bracket that goes on this side here. Tighten that down. Our intake is all in. We throw our fuel rail back on. We have our spacers that go in. Okay, we got new injector O-rings. The ones that come off the top, pretty easy. Now we just wanna pull out the injectors and there's a second seal we wanna replace. We'll just do that to all of them. They come out pretty easy too. If you need, you can use a pick. A lot of times if you just pinch it and push, you can get that pick underneath it. 
and then bring it over. We'll just do that to all of them. We'll get the old seals off. Now the new seals just slip right over the top. That's it. So pretty easy. Get all new injector O-rings. I'll put a little lubricant on there, a little silicone paste. Rub it around, just a light coating. And now we'll stick it in. Perfect. We'll just do that to all of them. Now we'll do the same thing with our big top ones. Those will just slip on. And then we'll lubricate the outside. Okay, drop it in. I think we gotta lift up our valve cover. There we go. Okay, we'll just angle it so they all fit in. And then we'll give it a push. There we go, perfect. We'll throw in our bolts. We'll snug them up and torque them down. Then we have a 10 millimeter bolt back here. All right, that buttons up our fuel rail. We have our dipstick. We'll get that bolted on the front here. Nice, now we can start putting some of our electrical connectors back where they go. We'll plug this stuff in. Plug in our throttle body. This top connector. There we go. So this, let's put this on our little spot here. Let's see, we're not ready for our valve cover yet, so we're gonna leave all this unplugged. I think that's pretty much it for now. We'll plug in the fuel line in the back here. We could throw a little bit of lubricant on our pipe. Just for that O-ring. Okay. Hey, that's it. Let's throw our inverter in. So before we put our inverter in, we want to make sure everything underneath is plugged in. So nothing is left unplugged on this side. Looks good. Our inverter might still have a little cool in it, so just keep that in mind. Okay, I forgot these bolts here. I left them in. That's it, bolt holes are lining up. All right, so I'll plug in our electrical connectors here in the back. Okay, now let's pull our top off. We have these we can plug in. This little grommet goes right in its little grommet hole. This here goes on the side. Plug these in. Okay. So you have this connector up front here. Sneak that through and that gets bolted in. It's this really big fat one. Gonna use a magnet for this corner one. It's a little tricky. There we go. Snug those down. They don't have to be crazy tight. And we'll get these. I think the biggest concern is to make sure it's tight enough but not over torqued. I think that's the easiest on these is over torquing. Right, we got our big one back here. Pull off all of those. The inverter is actually really easy to deal with. You just gotta watch out for the voltage, but once you know where to measure your voltage and you're safe, pretty straightforward stuff. As far as removing it anyway. Now as far as it operates, now that's a different level. Okay, now we have these plugs here. There you go, you should hear them snap. Nice. I want to say that is it. So we'll lift this up. We'll put our case back on. Make sure no wires are pinched. We got that one torx. Now really the torx can go anywhere, but I think having it in the front makes it easy to see. We'll snug all these down. All right, we got this tiny little coolant hose. Plug that in. And we need to find this other hose, okay. Got this bottom hose. I think there's just three coolant hoses. There we go. I think that's pretty much it. We got this connector here. Figure out how to do that. Oh, looks like this goes here. And then this goes here. That wasn't hard to figure out. And it's been a while since you worked on it last. You just gotta put the puzzle together. There's a little connector harness uh, retainer right here. Underneath, you'll see it. I wanna say, that is it. Nice, that takes care of our inverter. The only thing we didn't do on the throttle body is our two lower coolant hoses. We'll get those real quick. And then we are done putting the head back together. All right, good job. We got a lot accomplished. In our next video, we're gonna be putting on the timing, putting on our valve cover and filling it up with fluids. 
Here we are on our last video. We're gonna button up this project. We're gonna do the timing, valve cover, fill it up with fluids, and start it for the first time. You ready? Let's do it. So I had the valve cover just resting on here to keep it clean while we were moving around. So we will remove it. There we go. So we should have our timing marks pretty much where we want them, but we did move our number one piston away from top dead center. So we're gonna re-top dead center that one. Our chain should be pretty easy. Let me grab the chain real quick. So the chain routing, it has these colored links. There's two darker colored links. Those are for the cams. And then we have this lighter colored link. That's for the crank. Now in our kit, it gave us a new sprocket. Just one, not our VVT phaser, but just the standard sprocket. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. There's a spot on the cam that we can put a wrench. Let me get that size. Now, I couldn't find my wrench, but that's okay. We're just gonna use a pair of vice grips. We're not gonna damage anything. They make that spot particularly for this. All right, now we'll bust that loose. Looks like a 14 mil. Oh, got it. Okay, just took a little muscles. Pull this out, pop this off, put in our shiny new one. Now it's keyed, so it's pretty dummy proof. I've been known to be a dummy sometimes, so I'm glad they do stuff like that. Just for me. Okay, we'll thread the bolt back on. We'll get a torque. The torque is 47 foot pounds. My back is probably gonna be in your way. Okay, nice. Feels good to have a new sprocket. Just make sure we're still timing marks in the right spot. Okay, we go underneath and move the crank back. Let me show you where that timing mark is. So our cam phaser is pointing straight up and we got that nice line. And then this over here, there should be that line. Now there is an I in and an EX. Don't worry about those markings. It's just that plain timing mark. We'll go underneath and we want our dimple right there to be at three o'clock roughly. Now it's okay if it's a little off because the most important is that our timing link, that colored link lines up here. So we have to move the crank clockwise or counterclockwise just a smidge, that's okay. We just want our links to line up. Same with up here. If we have to move our cam to the left or to the right, that's okay. We just want our links to line up with our timing marks. It's that easy. So let's do it. Feed this through. Put that link there. That link there. Go underneath. I'm just gonna have to move my crank just a little. I'm one tooth off. All right, now let's put our guides on. And we have our guide arm, we'll throw that in. You want to make sure that the chain is centered inside that guide. Okay, now we have 80 inch pounds. And we have our tensioner arm, I'll put on from underneath. Now we have our cute little tensioner we'll put on. I have to get that from underneath. We want as much slack as possible on that tensioner side. That'll make it easier to get this on. And these are also 80 inch pounds. I'll get them from underneath. All right, let me show you how everything looks. So up top, we have our colored link right on our mark. Then we have that colored link right on its mark. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but we want these marks. There's also a mark or a little bump on the back of our cam cap here, same here. So that's how we line these up with that. So we got our marks lined up underneath. We got that mark lined up as well. Let me show you our tensioner right there. We want to pull that yellow pin and then our tensioner will release and that's it. Next thing we want to do is turn the crankshaft to full revolutions. And while we're turning the crankshaft, we're making sure nothing is binding inside. And when we come back on our second revolution, we want to make sure that our timing marks still line up. So let me do that real quick. And that's two. All right, let's check our marks. Now we're not worried about the colored links anymore. We're just worried about these notches. They line up with the back. And then make sure this one here lines up with the back. Okay, and then down here, we're about three o'clock. And there we go, three o'clock. And everything felt smooth when we were turning the crank. So our timing is set. Let's get our timing cover back on. All right, here's our timing cover. It's best to use a plastic scraper, but I cannot find any more plastic blades. So because this is getting RTV as a gasket, I feel comfortable using a metal blade, but normally plastic blades are what you want. We just want to get rid of all the old material as much as possible. Okay, all this old material. Even from our channels, there's a few channels 
that are important. That's like an overflow channel. That way if you put a little too much RTV, it won't go in somewhere it's not supposed to. Get these middle ones, get these. All right. Sweet, I'm gonna blow this out real quick. All right, nice. Now this was taken to the machine shop so they could put it through their parts washer because it was pretty grimy. So I took the oil pump out. We can install that real quick. We can use a little assembly lube for that. Just wipe off our components. Just gonna put a little lube on this. Okay. Just rub it around. Get it all over as much as possible. Nice tight fit. There we go. Then we have our inner. We'll do the same thing. Okay. So we'll wipe this all off and just make it look good. I guess it's internal. It doesn't matter what it looks like, but helps me sleep at night. That's it. This already has lubrication, so we should be good there. Now it should go on just one way. Let's figure out this shape here. There we go. There is no gasket for it. Now because this will be spinning dry for a little bit, I'm just gonna douse just a little oil. Not a lot, just a little. Okay. There. That makes me feel just a little better. Okay, now we got our bolts. I don't have a torque spec on this, but based on the timing chain torque for the guides and tensioner, I'm gonna say 80 inch pounds is probably good enough. I don't have a torque wrench for this, but just tight. I guess I could do those because this bit comes out. Let's see what size that is, probably eight millimeter. Why not, right? So next we're gonna take out our front oil seal. Get a screwdriver, a little pry bar. We should be able to just pop up on it. There we go. We'll wipe this out. And we're gonna put just a little bit of lubricant on the inside. On our new seal, we're gonna put a little bit of lubricant on the outside and on the inside. Then we're gonna pop it in. And these go in pretty easy, but just all the way down until it bottoms out. And that's it. So this thing is prepped and we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna apply our RTV. So now our RTV, we still have a lot left over in the tube they gave us, which is sweet. We wanna go to the inside of every bolt. So we'll go inside, 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 all the way around, all the way around on the inside. Now when it comes to the water pump, we want the inside of the bolts, but because we don't want any coolant to get into our crankcase, mixing in with our oil, I'm gonna go around each bolt and then just around each bolt with the water pump. We're not worried about this because this is external. So we just go to the inside, 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 all the way around. We'll go around this bolt and then it's just to the inside. So it's pretty easy. Oh, and then we want this spot here and this spot here, not here and not here. Those are getting O-rings on the engine side. And one thing I wanna do first, I'm just gonna clean this off really good. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're gonna go around these. It doesn't take a lot because these are machine surfaces, so they lay pretty flush or pretty tight. I mean, whoops, didn't need to go around that one. So like in some of these places, I made it a little too thick. Well, not too thick. It'll be okay. It'll just goop out. Okay, I go around this one to the inside, inside. Okay, I double check, make sure all the areas have a good coverage. Looking good, looking good, looking good. I'm just gonna come to the inside a little more on this one. Okay. All right, now our inside. There we go. And then, there we go. And now we have these O-rings we're gonna install on the engine. Let me show you that real quick. So we have this lower small one here. That's for our oil pump. And then we have this one right here, the bigger one. That's for our coolant. 
So you wanna make sure we have both of those seals in. Now we're ready to put the timing cover on. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go in from underneath. Is that how it came out? There we go, over the crank. We might have to turn our oil pump a little to get the crank to line up. So funny, coming up from the bottom is the ticket. What I forgot to do is take off the crank pulley bolt from when we were adjusting the timing and spinning stuff. So I have to take this back out, take off that crank pulley bolt. All right, let's try again. I had to reapply some of that RTV in a few key places. What? That's real life. Doing it from underneath though, that, that really is the way to go. Just trying to get the oil pump to line up. There we go. Got it. It was a little struggle getting that oil pump key to be right where the crank is, but you can spin it by hand, get it to line up. Let's throw a few bolts in, get it to squish out the side, then we'll wait the allotted time. The manual says within 15 minutes of installing the timing cover, while the RTV is still wet, we wanna put in our water pump. So we got a new gasket, new water pump, and again, this will be put on from underneath. I will throw the torque spec on the screen. There are a couple of different torques depending on the bolt. Once we have all that torque down, the last thing we can do underneath on the timing cover is put our crank position sensor back in. Then we'll come up, we'll put our valve cover on just so we can seal up this engine. Valve cover's pretty easy. We have our spark plug tube seals as well. Those can go right there. We're just fitting it in the groove. Getting groovy with it. Okay. Now on our head, we want a little RTV where the head and the timing cover meet. So right there on that seam where the valve cover is gonna go. Same back here. Doesn't take a lot, just a little dab. Now I'll lay this down. There we go. We're in our bolts. Now we did get two new seals for our big bolts. Put those in the middle. That comes in our valve cover gasket kit. Or our head gasket kit if we're doing the head. All right, we'll snug these down. We'll start in the middle. And these are seven foot pounds. We throw in our spark plugs and ignition coils. Hand thread them in. And these are torqued to 13 foot pounds. Click. They have a little crush washer on them, so you'll feel it crush and then bottom out. Putting on our coils, we want a little dielectric grease inside the boot. That's gonna help it slide over the plug easier and then off better in the future. If you do decide to replace your coils, go with a Denso. That's Toyota's brand that they use, stick with OEM. There's a lot of cheap aftermarket coils that will leave you not feeling well when you have to keep replacing them. I'll slip these down. Now you don't wanna do this too tight. I've seen these stripped out before. They're just going into light aluminum. So that's it, 80 inch pounds. I don't have a torque spec on it, but we'll go G and S. Good and snug. Right, we can plug our coils in. And get this set down. My camera battery died. All we did before bolting this down was we put our hoses over. Fat hose goes on one nipple, skinny hose goes on the back. And then we got that all set in. We're gonna leave our injectors unplugged. So when we do our initial crank, it doesn't start on us. We just want that oil circulating through the engine. So injectors unplugged, our air box, we're gonna leave off. And then we put our VVT solenoid in. We could plug that in. Okay. Next we're gonna put on our water pump pulley. I think that'll be easy to do right now. And then we'll get our motor mount on. Now you can raise and lower the engine as needed. I actually might lower it and do it from underneath. I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So let me see what it looks like when I lower it. Oh yeah. Yep, so I'm gonna get that from underneath. So from underneath you have perfect access when the engine's lowered. And what I did to tighten those bolts up is they have these little slots and there's an ear on the back. I don't know if you can see it, but, but you'll see it when you're down here. But there's a little ear so you can stick an extension in it and it gets caught on that ear and that holds it from spinning and then you can torque down each of those bolts one by one. So that's what I did for the water pump pulley. Now there's a few things I forgot. So we plugged in our crank position sensor, but the wiring harness has these little harness retainers. There's two of them. 
So what we'll end up doing is just match up to the bolt that they go to, pop that bolt out, and then put it back on. So there's two spots that we forgot uh, wherever these, these match up. Once we have that, then we can put on our air compressor. And I wanna say that buttons up everything down below. Oh, we got our crank pulley that we'll put back on. So we'll do that in a second. Let me just get caught up with this stuff. We'll put this on, I'll throw a torque spec on the screen for this. I'll just do that off camera, just three bolts. Easy peasy. All right. All right, we got our crankshaft pulley. Now there's just that little key. Line it up. There we go. Put our bolt in. Now this is torqued to 95 foot-pounds. So they make a holder for these, and you just get it with a torque wrench. All right, let's put the engine mount on. Jack the engine back up. All right, we got this pulley first. I think all these bolts are the same length. Yep, they look like it. I'll slide that under. Looks like I have to pull the water pump pulley back off. And lower the engine a little. You can't see anything I'm doing down there, but the water pump pulley does have to come off for that bracket to go on. And we wanna lower the engine just to get really good access to it. So all the bolts are easiest to get to from underneath, except this one top bolt. All right, I'll get a torque spec for you on these. All right, now we put this on. All right, we'll get these torqued. All right, now we got this thing. All right, we gotta get this AC line above this bracket. There we go. Remember the one in the frame? That's a stud that we just have to tighten up. All right, throw all our nuts on. Then we got two nuts underneath. We'll get these puppies torqued. Okay, our purge solenoid goes on this. We'll just mount that on. Okay, we got our AC line. It goes right here. Like it got bent a little, we just bend it back. We just wanna make sure that it's not gonna rub on anything. That's our most important. Okay, and we'll just move this out of the way so it doesn't rub on that mount. Okay, nice, and it's not rubbing over here. Okay, awesome. Two bolts up top. One bolt in the front. Make sure this goes in. I don't know if I have to remove that bracket again or not. I think I am just for the ease of things. Just gonna push it out of the way. Set this down. Don't forget to plug in our two hoses for our washer fluid. Looks like there's a an order to things. I'm gonna disconnect the AC line bracket because it has to move out of the way for us. There we go. So that should fit in the little hole underneath. Okay, now we'll remount our AC stuff. We got our two electrical connectors for our pumps. Now they are specific. One goes on one, one goes on the other. You can't get them mixed up. So if it's not fitting on one, swap it around. Just snug. All right, we'll put this back. Okay, we can put our brake reservoir on. It goes in the little square slot here first. And then slides forward. A little electrical connector. We got our AC pressure sensor connector. All right, let's see, I think this can go under here. There we go, snap in, this can snap in. All right, what are we missing? Let's just give it a good, oh, we got our ground strap here. All right, time to fill it up with oil. Now the first oil you use is not that important, just use the cheap. 5W30, it's only gonna be in the engine for about 20 minutes. Just gonna fill it up. Now coolant, we're gonna install a little funnel. Okay. Before filling up the coolant with our funnel, right here is a six millimeter Allen, that's a bleeder for our cooling system. So we'll crack that loose. We'll crack that loose and then we'll fill that up until we get coolant coming out of here. Now if you don't wanna make a mess, what you can do is get a hose and attach it from here and then fill it into your overflow. So that's just one way to do it. And we'll fill this up. All right, we got coolant coming out. So we'll close this. And we're gonna fill this up just a little more. So we have a little extra in here. We're gonna go over and fill up our inverter cooler. Let's turn you around. So in the front, we have a bleeder. We'll pop that bleeder. We're gonna loosen it up. 10 millimeter. There we go. All right, we'll pop the cap off here. Now we'll start topping this off. 
Nice and easy. We got a little coolant coming out. Okay, I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna open it again. So it's just coming out, solid coolant. So I'll close that off. We're gonna hook back up our hybrid battery. We're gonna put the service plug back in, get that connected. And then before we start the vehicle, we have one more thing to do, and that's put our serpentine belt on. It routes super easy. We'll tighten that up, and then I'll give you a torque spec for that pulley bolt. We're getting close. After connecting back up our 12 volt battery and our hybrid battery, I turned the car to accessory because I was gonna turn on this pump separately. But as soon as I did that, the pump started running all on its own. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and fill this up. Crack this bleeder real quick. It's just coolant's coming out. All right, we are ready to crank this engine over. Now we have our injectors unplugged because we don't want it to start. We just want the engine to spin, get that oil circulating at a low RPM. So that did two things for us. One, it just spun the engine over, and then two, let us know that we forgot to hook our exhaust back up. So that was kind of loud. Now, because it did not start, it shows that it failed. That's okay. Or we can do clear codes. I want to run through that one more time. All right, it did not start just like we wanted it to. So it failed again. Now we'll just go back through, clear all the codes one more time, and then we'll actually get it to start. So I'm gonna go under, hook up our injector connectors and get our air box back on and our mass airflow sensor plugged back in. So I'm gonna do that off camera real quick. Oh, and then our exhaust, we wanna get that bolted up too. All right, are you ready? This is the moment of truth. We're gonna start it up for real, have everything connected back together. Are you nervous? I'm a little nervous. Let's hit the button and start to pray. Okay, it didn't shut off. All right, turn it off. I do have a check engine light, so let's see what that's about. Let's go to the engine, hit okay. Read fault code, hopefully it's something simple. Oh, no trouble codes, why was my check engine light on? All right, last thing to do is put our cowl and wipers back on. Have our wiper motor. All right, thanks for watching. This was a big job, a lot of fun. If you have any questions, comment down below. Like, subscribe, see you on the next one.